The Five by Cody Hall. Fade in, exterior gas station night. A small, dusty gas station quietly sits under the stars next to a desolate country road. The only vehicle in sight is a gray 1987 Dodge pickup truck parked along the side of the building. Within the shadow of the ice machine in front of the store, the brief glow of a cigarette cherry reveals a man. This man is Joe. Short, tanned, and wrinkled, his fluffy gray beard sits below an orange ski mask pulled up like a beanie on top of his head. His filthy clothes seem to match his husky voice perfectly, as if he has just dug himself out of his own grave. He is 63, but appears older. He talks on a payphone in front of the gas station. No which Waffle House. I just need to know what time you'll be there. Okay. Well, what time is it now? Okay, I'll see you then. Hey, Reggie, um, don't forget the tabs, okay? He hangs up the phone and stands looking at the ground for a second. He looks around him, peering up and down the street. He takes a final large puff on a cigarette and throws it to the ground, pulling the orange ski mask on his head down over his face and beard as he walks into the store. God. Interior gas station night. The only sound in the old, cramped, dusty gas station is the warble of an old radio heard above the drone of the beverage coolers. The squeak of the door causes Henry to look up from his book. He is 61 and wears a worn, red button-up shirt tucked into his well-pressed khakis. He stands up from his stool and puts his yellow paperback copy of Flint face down on the counter. Joe walks up to the counter, pulling a small black revolver out of his jacket. Money. Joe tries to mask his voice by making it deep and short. What? Money, now. What? Money, now. Please don't. Joe. Now, open the register. Oh, I, uh... Henry steps back from the counter and sits on his stool, his hands resting on his knees. Hey, I need the money, now. Joe leans over the counter and starts banging the keys on the register. Open it. Uh, um, uh. Henry's hands suddenly cling to his chest and he leans forward, moaning loudly like a cow in labor. The register drawer slides open with a ding. Uh. Joe reaches for the money as Henry leans back on his stool and slumps against the wall, dropping his, his arms to his sides. Joe is stuffing money from the register into the pockets of his jacket. The last bill, a lonely five, goes in and he looks up at Henry and finally notices something is terribly wrong. Hey. Hey. Joe scrambles over the counter and checks on Henry. Oh, my God. No. Where's your medicine? Oh, shit. He turns around and picks up the telephone by the register and dials 911. Uh, help. The, the speedy chef on Highway 14. Hurry up. Joe drops the phone and slides back over the counter, knocking his pistol to the ground as he does. He bends to pick it up as the door of the gas station squeaks open. Joe quickly stands and points the gun towards the intruder. The man at the door stops dead in his tracks when he sees the gun pointed at him. Henry makes a gurgling sound from behind the counter. Both Joe and the man glance over to the counter. The man at the door takes advantage of the distraction and pulls a pistol from behind his back and quickly fires a shot towards Joe, missing him by inches. Joe's entire body flinches and a shot erupts from the barrel of his gun, striking the man in the chest. He drops to the ground. Oh, God. Joe leaps over the man as he runs out of the store. Exterior gas station night. A white sheriff's deputy cruiser sits empty at a pump in front of the store. Joe hobbles by it and disappears down the road into the night. Interior Waffle House night. Joe <coughs> masks sits alone at a booth by the window with a cup of coffee in front of him. His foot is jittering nervously under the table. He has a blank stare on his face. A waitress comes over and fills his cup. The waitress is Sarah Beth. She is 27 years old with short, dark hair and a cheerful smile but never quite reaches her green eyes. Joe doesn't notice her at first. Everything okay? Need anything else? No, uh, thank you. She walks back behind the counter. A man comes through the doors of the late night diner and walks straight for the bar that Sarah Beth stands behind. Clay, 28 years old, with short, dirty blonde hair, faded blue jeans, and a dark green t-shirt, demands Sarah Beth's attention with his bright, direct gaze. How does your last day at Waffle House feel? What are you doing here? If Reggie sees you here, he's going to keep both our asses. Sarah Beth, I'm here to get you. We're leaving from a meal tonight. I've got all my stuff out there in the car. Sarah Beth beckons for him to follow her down to the end of the bar where they can talk alone. Look, I've been thinking, and I can't just leave Reggie like that. We're married. This ain't no high school boyfriend girlfriend. What are you talking about? He hits you. He hits Tristan. Look at your eye. 
It ain't that simple. He pays for our house and our car and our food. When he found out about you and me, he threatened to take Tristan if I tried to leave him. And he could. Wait, 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 just listen. Outside of the parking lot, a large truck pulls up. Joe drops a five on the table, reconsiders, and replaces it with a one. He quickly stands up from his booth and rushes outside. Exterior Waffle House parking lot, night. Joe hops in the passenger side of the truck, pulling out money from his jacket as he settles in his seat. The driver is Reggie, 30 years old, wearing green scrubs and a camouflage baseball cap. His baby face starkly contrasts with his cold demeanor. He takes a big, noisy slurp through the straw of a large foundry cup. Boy, I'm glad to see you. Uh, I mean, was delighted to be here. Did you see Sarah back in there? Who? Could to she. I gotta get back to the hospital, so. No, I didn't see anybody. All right, all right. I need as many tabs and eight milligrams of that sauce. Joe quickly turns his head and looks inside. Sarah Beth has walked into view and Clay is following right behind her. Reggie unbuckles his seatbelt and kills the engine. He starts getting out. Reggie, I need you. Get the fuck out of here. Reggie, please. Get Just out of here. He pushes Joe out of the door and then slams his shut. Interior Waffle House night. Sarah Beth is scrubbing the bar with a towel as Clay pleads with her. But I told you, I got the job. I got it. I'll be able to send all the money I make home short home to you and Tristan. And I'll only be gone for two weeks at a time. You two will be able to stay home together all the time. You'll never have to work. Okay. Okay, let's do this. When I get off, I'll go pick up Tristan from the sitter's house and I'll meet you. Sarah Beth suddenly looks behind Clay and screams as Reggie bursts at the door behind them. Clay spins around as Reggie buries a fist in his stomach. Outside now. Reggie, please, no. Shut the door, please. Reggie pulls Clay outside by his shirt collar. Exterior Waffle House parking lot at night. Reggie slams Clay into the grill of his truck. Sarah Beth comes outside and tries to pull Reggie off. I thought this was over, huh? I thought you told him to fuck off. Reggie, please, I'm sorry. Clay is getting to his feet. Joe walks from behind the back of the truck and stands over by Sarah Beth, trying to get Reggie's attention. Reggie shoves Clay hard in the chest, sending him flying onto his back on the concrete. Reggie, if I could just, um, so this is how you were paying for all that for you and Tristan? Clay has gotten up and is running towards Reggie. Like beating him? Reggie turns and sees him at the last moment. Just one. Um, Reggie deflects Clay into Joe and they both go flying backwards. Joe lands hard on his back, the back of his head making a loud smack against the concrete. Clay lands on top of him, the air rushing out of his lungs. Clay sits up. Joe does not move. He is unconscious. Oh my god, Reggie, get him to the hospital. I'm not the one that knocked him out. Reggie walks up to Sarah Beth and reaches inside her apron, grabbing her car keys and putting them in his pocket. I'm going to pick up Tristan and put him in a day at the hospital until I get off. And then we'll be back to pick you up after. We'll talk then. Stay the fuck away from my wife and sorry sack of shit. He spits on Clay as he gets back into his truck and backs out. Interior hospital room night. Clay sits in a chair under a television mounted on the wall. In front of him are two beds. In one lies Joe, in the other, Henry, the gas station attendant, both asleep. Joe's head is heavily bandaged. Clay stares at the wall across from him, lost in murderous thought. His jaw flexes from his teeth grinding. He clenches and relaxes his fists. Joe's jacket is hanging on the back of the chair he is sitting in. His elbow bumps something hard inside. He begins going through the jacket. He finds the wad of money and the small pistol. He puts the money back inside the jacket and stands up, slipping the pistol in the back of his jeans under his t-shirt. He looks up and sees that Joe is stirring in his bed. Reggie, I need him. I need him, man. Where are they? Clay quietly stands up and leaves the room, taking the jacket with him. As soon as Clay leaves the room, Joe's eyes begin to flutter open. He looks around at his surroundings and slowly sits up in his bed. He holds his head in his hands. He looks at the bed next to him. Oh shit, look who it is. Henry's eyes open up a little and look over towards Joe. Joe slowly gets out of his bed and limps over to Henry's bed and sits down next to his legs. Hey Henry. Joe, what happened? Man, the old poor Ford family took her again. Thank God. Thought I was shot. What are you doing here? I thought you were still in Sweetwater. Uh, no, I'm back in Millbrook. Another drunk dive down some stairs. Drunk? Who do I look like? Uncle Jimmy? No. When I heard about you having another heart fire, I popped up from what I was doing so fast that I whacked my head on the bottom of the table and nearly yanked the lady's skirt off. Henry laughs with pain, winces across his face, and he quickly stops. Henry takes Joe's hand. Just 
glad you're here and not somewhere out there. God knows where. Me too. Me too. Interior Hospital Hallway 9. Clay looks around the corner and sees Reggie leaning against the front desk of the hospital, talking to a female nurse. Reggie and the female nurse laugh, and then Reggie takes a big slurp from his fountain drink. How did they blow the bill in the two weeks ahead? It's finally sweet. She's a little farther down. Clay watches for a second and then slips away. Exterior hospital parking lot, night. Clay wanders through a maze of vehicles until he finds Reggie's truck. He looks around and then tries to open the driver's side door. It is locked. He tries the passenger side. Locked. Clay looks around once more and then pulls the pistol from under his shirt and wraps the jacket around his hand holding the pistol. He hits the small rear passenger side window with the butt of the gun until it shatters. He waits for an alarm to sound. There is only silence. Once inside, he digs around until he finds a stash of pill bottles. He looks through them and picks one out labeled Dilaudid, 8 milligram. He reaches in the pocket of Joe's jacket and pulls out a five-dollar bill and sets it on the center console of the truck. He pours about 25 of the, of the Dilaudid onto the five-dollar bill and crushes them up with the empty pill bottle. He carefully folds up the five so that none of the powder spills out and stores it in his empty wallet. He wipes the pill bottle with Joe's jacket and places the bottle in the center console. Interior hospital hallway night. Clay peeks around the corner at the front desk again. The only person there is the female nurse. Clay looks around but does not see anyone. Reggie suddenly appears behind the nurse and touches the back of her neck with his fountain drink cup. She recoils and squeals. Liquid and ice can be heard sloshing around inside. Clay turns and walks into a nearby room and presses the red emergency button next to the sleeping patient's bed and then runs out and across the hall into another room. Reggie and the female nurse jog by into the room across from Clay as he slips out and runs to the front desk. He pulls out his wallet and carefully opens the pie and takes the top off of the drink. He hesitates. The image of Sarah Beth's bruised eye flashes through his head. He dumps in the powder, puts on the top, and swirls the straw around. He is barely able to duck behind the counter and crawl around to the front of the desk as Reggie and the nurse return. It's like an interesting night. The phone at the desk rings. Reggie picks up. Reggie Davis? Yeah. Okay, I'll be in just a minute. Be right there. Reggie grabs his drink and walks away. Clay creeps off in the opposite direction and turns a corner, a grin touching his lips. Exterior hospital parking lot, Dawn. Clay slowly walks out of the hospital as the first sunlight begins to touch the sky. A car pulls up in front of him and Sarah Beth gets out of the passenger door. She slams the door and runs toward him. Clay! She embraces him. He is shocked for a moment but then wraps his arms around her as well. What are you doing here? He's never going to hurt us again. I know. We're going. We're going to Mobile with you. Well, come on. I'm sorry. Go pull your car around. I'm going to go there Tristan and we're out of here. They look at each other for a second like giddy school children and then both run off in different directions. Clay gets into his car and pulls around to the curb in front of the main entrance of the hospital. He sits waiting, looking at the doors and drumming his hands on the wheel. He waits. Ten seconds pass. Fifteen. Finally, Sarah Beth comes jogging out of the front doors holding Tristan, her four-year-old son, against her. She is almost to the car when a voice from behind her screams. Sarah Beth. Clay's eyes widen in shock as he sees Reggie coming out of the hospital after them. Get back here now. Sarah Beth stops running and turns around to see him. As she spins around, the large fountain drink cup that Tristan was holding drops from his hand onto the ground, only ice spilling onto the sidewalk where the cup lands. Clay's face turns white as he opens the door and stands up out of the car. Okay. Tristan's arms flop back and forth as Sarah Beth turns to run to Clay's car. She finally notices that her son is not moving. Tristan! Tristan! She holds him out to see his face, and his head rolls back so that his face looks straight up at the sky for a second before rolling to the side. His eyes are open and glassy. Oh my god! She lays him down on his back. Reggie, help! Clay is frozen behind the car. He stares with wide eyes at Tristan on the ground. Reggie runs over and drops on the ground next to Tristan and slaps his face a few times, first lightly and then with more force. Tristan, Tristan, wake up. My God, what's wrong with him? Reggie scoops Tristan's limp body up in his arms and turns and runs back into the hospital with Sarah Beth right behind him. 
Clay watches them enter the building and then stares down at the concrete where Tristan lay, covering his mouth with his hand. He inhales and exhales deeply through his nostrils, in and out, in and out, fade out.